All right, welcome back to my beginner's guide or mini guide to Insane for Gears of War 3, uh, Act 5. And this is part three of uh, three videos. And uh, in the last video, I was trying to wrap up Acts 3 through 5, and I uh, got a little ambitious there. Um, 5 is just really needs a video on its own because there's some parts in there that are pretty tough, especially towards the end and, of course, the final boss. But, um,. Be sure, if you're having trouble with Acts 1, 2, 3, or 4, um, the first video covers Act 1 and 2, and the second video Acts covers 3 and 4, and of course, this video is going to be covering Act 5. So, that said, uh, let's get into it. Okay, Act 5, Chapter 4, Threshold, Mortars and Friends. Now, I'm really just going to cover two different areas in Act 5, and I know there's some other tough sections in Act 5, like when you see the Armored Cantuses again, um, or when you're fighting to get to the gas barge, but in my opinion, um, I didn't spend more than, I either didn't die or maybe died maybe just a couple times getting through those, but in every section besides this part and the final boss, I just followed the, my original concepts, you know, hoard your explosive weapons, use your teammates, um, take your shots, and, you know, be precise with your shots, always stay in cover, etc., and uh, I didn't have, if you stick to that, you you shouldn't have any issues with um, any of the parts prior to this part and the final boss, with the exception of those two areas. So, now Threshold isn't, um, hasn't come up just yet. We're actually still in Act, excuse me, we're still in Chapter 3, uh, Shattered Paradise. But what I wanted to show you guys is there's a sniper rifle in this, like, lobby area here. So memorize this area because there's two of them that look like this. This is the one that has a tree in it. I believe this is the first one you see. And there is a... Um, see, I'm trying to give my um, torque bow to Baird there. There is a sniper rifle right here. You're going to need it. Do not shoot it. Um, do not waste any bullets. We just need it for one boss. Not boss, but... Um, one enemy, and it's going to be this mortar asshole. He's going to give you a lot of trouble um, if you don't take him out. Now, before doing that, you do have to help out your buddies here because there's just way too many, way too many guys. They're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to help them out. So, as you can see, I've been following my roll set, um, keeping uh, boomer shots or explosives only for um, some of the tougher bosses, or not tougher bosses, I keep saying bosses, they're not bosses, but you know what I mean, the, um, the tougher enemies. Now, when you stand there, be careful, because you can still get killed with the mortar, mortar shots. Okay, here's why we need the mortar shot, excuse me, the sniper rifle, here's the only reason we need it, just to take out this one guy here. It's going to make passing this area a lot easier for you. Um, so what happens is, after he shoots four or five mortar shots, he has to get up and and um, reload. But he only gives you literally like half a second to shoot him in the face. All it takes is one shot to the face, and he'll be he'll die. He'll go down. Whatever. So I don't get him here. I think I'm pretty sure I don't get him here because I'm first trying to figure out if I'm at the right area. And I'm like, is this guy gonna come up? And of course he did right there. See, that's how much time you have to do it. So I recognized that, and I was like, alright, well, let me... I want to get in an area that's familiar to you guys that can, um... So, for example, you know, get in a corner like I am now. All the way into this corner. And then aim where exactly where I aimed. And uh, I did take him out right there. See that where that one notch is to the little bit to the left? How my reticle is just slightly below it. Again, if you aim there... His face should pop up, and you should get the same opportunity to kill him. Alright, so now that we've taken him, out, taken him out, this does something awesome for us in it. And that uh, gives us ample opportunity to really just loot this whole area here. Uh, take our time. And the second wave enemies that come is usually super, super tough. Uh, because you not only have to deal with those enemies, but you're also having to deal with, um, you know, the mortar guys still shooting you. But... Obviously, we took him out. You really don't need the sniper rifle anymore unless you're uh uncanny shot and 
you always carry it around, then by all means do what you want. But um, once you get here, uh, just just like before, you know, know that uh, there's an armored Cantus in this wave. And if you've also um, followed my original, my tips and tricks in giving your teammates boomer shots or Turk boy ammo, then they're going to help out immensely in this part because, you know, especially if they're able to take out the armored Cantus for you. So. Let me see. If I'm not mistaken. They do a pretty good job without really any of my help. There's the armored Cantus. I think these died. No, he's still alive. He's over there to the right. He, uh, even though his his Achilles heel is the um, there you go, he's dead. Even though his Achilles heel is explosives, he can be um, taken out with just regular fire, like Lancer fire, but it takes a ton. Um, and here I'm just going back for, looking back for some, um, some more torque bow or boomer shot. And I don't think I find any. No. Hmm. Now the next section is uh, arguably one of the tougher spots in the game. I wouldn't say top three, but it is pretty darn tough. Um, what the game wants you to do is hide in this bunker area and basically ride out this uh, Lambent invasion that's going to come here in a minute. But um, um, John had a really good idea in his video because I was trying to figure out some of the best techniques to get past this. And uh, what, what the difference between him and my video is that. Uh, all of his guys got stuck behind that um, these sandbags, and what I did is I, I only really needed one one grenade, uh, or excuse me, a couple grenades, and then I got right out. By doing this, my guys never got an opportunity to set up behind the bags, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, one of them, and I think it's um, Coltrane. He actually stays outside of the um, he stays outside of the sandbags, and um, so if you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about and why I keep why that's important, when your when your guys go down, obviously they go to like a crawling state, right? Well, if they're behind the sandbags, they can't crawl to you for you to revive them. So if all three of your guys are there, you're going to be stuck here. And have to fight all of these Lambent um, enemies by yourself. So what happened to me. Is I got lucky. And like I said. Um, in Coltrane. He never went behind the bags. So this makes me wonder. If. Um, maybe the best strategy to do. Or to use is. Um, is to stay within, uh, excuse me, never go behind the sandbags, even if you need those, um, even if you need the grenades like I did. Um, one of the things you may want to try is just run straight over here and see if you can get your team to follow and therefore keep them out from behind the, um, the sandbags. So. See, right now they're all down, and I. And it feels like. Oh, yeah, you gotta watch out for this guy, the Gunker. Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, Marcus will always have like an audio cue where he'll say incoming or something like that. So, but be wary of the Gunker because he will um, obviously end your life in one spell. But, um, yeah, I, I do end up um, clearing this section in this video right here. 
in my let's play, um, basically I was, I was like, holy shit, Coltrane's coming over here. So, um, I was pretty stoked about that, because obviously when you revive him, he will, uh, instinctually, or, or basically he's programmed to go revive the other two guys. So. And here I'm trying to get this last pod, because I know if I don't. I miss it. I think I get him a second chance here. Yes. And then this asshole. Look at that. Three shots. Almost. And at this point, my teammates, I don't know how they did it. Well, I have an idea. Uh, but they took out the Gunker by, by, by themselves. And it's because they had boomer shots, I imagine. I didn't witness it or see it, but uh, that is why you give them the boomer ammo or the boomer guns. Because um, cause they can help out like that, you know what I'm saying? I believe this is probably the last guy, and he just got boomered. And that's it. Not that hard. Alright, time for the last boss. Alright, Act 5, Chapter 6, The Reckoning, Final Boss, Last Checkpoint. And the reason we're starting at the last checkpoint is if you made it to the final boss, your skill set should um, be such that uh, you shouldn't have any sort of issue or problem getting to at least this point, this checkpoint, this last one. And that's why we're going to start here, because this is where all hell breaks loose. So this is my pattern um, to be in that. So f follow as close as you can. What you're going to do as soon as the uh, checkpoint starts, run all the way to the right. Skip that um, hammer dawn. You're going to want to grab this hammer dawn. Because it's the furthest one away. And we're going to have to come back eventually for uh, refill on the hammer dawn. The last thing you want to do is run any further than you have to. So, um... Once you've picked up um, that hammer of dawn, come here. And uh, other quick tip, try and you have the uh, Retro Lancer by this point. If you don't, this may take a little bit longer than you hope. Retro Lancer is just more powerful, and it does a lot the job a lot better than uh, some of the other weapons. So you're going to have plenty of opportunity to pick one up, either the chapter prior to this, or even the um, when this this chapter starts here, when you're fighting out in the yard, um, you could pick up a lentro, uh, excuse me, a retro lancer out there too. But um, do yourself a favor and pick one up. All right, so here's the sequence. When the queen first starts on the um, on the tower, you got to take her down as soon as you can. And uh, once you get to this little area here, uh, I found that the um, the, what do you call them? The Theron Guards. They'll leave you alone, for the most part. Unless your team gets overwhelmed. And, uh, you're the only one, you're the only focus of attention. Then, yeah, then the Lambent, uh, excuse me, not the Lambent, but the, uh, uh, Theron Guards are just gonna kick your ass. But, um, one quick tip. I, I don't know if this helps or not, but it definitely felt like it helped. Keep, make sure you keep on hitting left, clicking your left stick. And have your team fire on... Um, the queen and her beetle bug, whatever she's riding it on. But, um, yeah, so here's the first time she goes down. In theory, this is supposed to take three times, but, um, I think if you follow what I do, it only take you twice, which is important because, uh, eventually we're going to run out of ammo. We're going to have to go back out into the fight and... You're just going to have to run out there and hopefully pick up some ammo and not die. I died so many times getting to that part where I already took care of her one time. All I was doing is running out there to get ammo and um, I died a silly death. So here I'm already out of Hammer of Dawn. I know she's down and um, so I go in and pick up ammo. The hammer of on. Hopefully you don't die. And she just needs one more spec here to, to take her off this ledge. 
the other thing, when you shoot the hammer down, one of the things I found is uh, traditionally when you play Gears of War 1 or 2, when you use the hammer down, you hold on to it, right? So the beam keeps coming down. Uh, I f the way it felt to me is when I would do that, it was like I was wasting Hammer of Dawn uh, ammo because I would I would use it and use it, and then I was constantly having a need needing to go back and refilling the, the Hammer of Dawn. But in this video, what I would do instead is uh, I would hold on to it long enough for the beam to come down once to where it would tag her, and then she would go into that animated state where she's getting hurt really bad. And um, and then I only needed. Uh, obviously, you saw me use the first hammer down all the way down to uh, empty it out. And then I went out just now a few seconds ago, picked it up again. And um, you know, took her out and whatnot um, without having to go out for a third refill. The other thing too here, this really sucks having this palm tree in the way. But I played this part so many times that I memorized her pattern behind the palm tree. She does kind of a circle. And um, here I'm having a little bit tough situation because uh, the uh, Theron guards are really pointed on. But um, here I'm trying to use my pistol ammo because it's she's going to go to the tower one more time and I really don't. And I really want to use my retro lancer ammo for that. So here I'm just trying to spray and pray if you will. Just try to pour. Really pour it on and get her to go to the tower. Now one quick tip, if you let her see how she's doing the side to side thing, she keeps going from one side to the other. If you let her do it too long, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the fifth time she will go up to the tower. That is not good if uh, you let her go back to the tower. Because then you have to get her off the tower again just to get her to do this side to side business. Um, so here is, I believe, the last time where she will go side to side. After this, if I don't get her, if I don't put her down here, then she's gonna do. The, uh, she's gonna go back to the tower. And then, if you look at our ammo count, if she does that, we're really screwed because we have to go back out there and get more ammo, which potentially puts us in a position where we could die again. So um, here. By the graces of the video game gods, look what I get down to with this Hammer of Dawn. Look at the spec that I have left. And I'm thinking, oh shit, I have to go back out there. And I prayed to the video game baby Jesus, and they answered my prayers. <laughs> and that last spec on the Hammer of Dawn uh, allowed me to beat the game. So that's it. That's... What I would recommend doing, guys, follow that pattern to the T, and hopefully it'll all work out for you, just like it worked out for me, and hopefully for you as well. You get that nice, shiny achievement that says, I uh, beat this crazy-ass game on Insane. So that's it, guys. I hope I really hope you guys enjoyed this uh, mini-guide. I'll be making more in the future, um, and probably in the same format. But if you have any questions, go to my YouTube channel, R3B3LINK. And I'll try and help you guys out immensely or as much as I can through any of the other sections that you may have trouble with. So that said, uh, peace off, guys.